When selecting the proper size of drying hopper for a drying system, we must take the bulk density of the material into consideration. Bulk density tells us the comparative weight of the material as measured by weighing a given cubic portion of the material. In the U.S., we generally use the cubic foot and express the bulk density as so many pounds per cubic foot. With the metric system, the units of measure are the cubic centimeter or the liter and density is expressed as either grams per cubic centimeter or kilograms per liter. For this presentation, we'll go through the calculation process in English units, pounds and cubic feet, and then cover metric units at the end. So as an introduction, we know that different resins have different bulk densities, especially when they are combined with regrind. Here's why this is important. We must remember that resin is molded or extruded by weight. Processors calculate the cost of their production by the weight of the material used, and often, as an extrusion, target a specific weight of the extruded product as their goal. So bulk density affects how much material is required to achieve the needs of the finished product by weight. As an example of how dramatic differences in bulk density can be, here are four identically sized Gaylord boxes filled with four different materials of four different bulk densities. Even though the quantity is exactly the same, one Gaylord box, look at the differences in the weight of each Gaylord due to the differences in bulk density. And as you can see, bulk density is strongly affected by the presence of regrind in the mix. Regrind is nearly always lighter in bulk density than virgin material and reduces the overall weight, or bulk density, of the mix. So using this example, let's put those same materials in four identical hoppers so we can see the effect bulk density can have on drying. Once again, the weight differences for the same quantity of material is alarming, but when we check to see how much drying time we can achieve with this one drying hopper size, but with those four different materials, we can easily see that if we ran the same processing rate, we would have huge differences in how many hours of drying time we could expect because of the differences in weight. Remember that the processing machine is consuming material by weight, not capacity. So we need to adjust our hopper sizes in order to achieve the same drying with different bulk densities. Materials with lower bulk densities will simply need a bigger hopper to accommodate the weight required for the product being molded or extruded. So how does this apply to selecting a drying hopper? Well, First we need to understand that bulk density does make a difference and then gather all the possible information from the application so we can use it to select the right size of drying hopper. Here's a simple visual way to calculate the impact of bulk density on a drying system. Let's say we need a 50-50 mix of virgin and regrind material for a 100 pound an hour drying job and we need 4 hours of residence time to achieve satisfactory drying. What should our hopper size be? For our ratio of virgin to regrind, visualize the hopper being split. In this case, in half, with one half filled with virgin and the other half filled with regrind for that 50-50 ratio. Now let's see how we will calculate the combined bulk density of these two halves to help us figure out the size of the drying hopper. Let's use a little math. First, Although it is best to always weigh the regrind to determine its bulk density, we can take a shortcut by presuming that it is about one half the density of virgin material, which is pretty common. The density of the virgin material is typically part of its description, found in MSD sheets and other descriptive facts from its manufacturer. Our example here shows the virgin at 34 pounds per cubic foot and the regrind is one half of that, or 17 pounds per cubic foot. Our equation will factor in the percentages of virgin and regrind along with their bulk densities to determine the average bulk density according to this equation. Let's plug in our numbers and see what we get. The 50% proportion of virgin will plug in as 0.5 and the density of the virgin is entered as 34. We can follow the same procedure for the regrind and then add our two new numbers together to get the average bulk density of these two material forms. Our answer is 25.5 pounds per cubic foot. 
The next step will be to combine this average bulk density number with the required residence time in hours and the throughput number to determine the size of the hopper that is required. This part is easy since we know all of these numbers. Simply put, we multiply drying time in hours by the throughput in pounds per hour and divide by the average bulk density. Plugging in our numbers, we multiply 4 hours by 100 pounds per hour and divide the average bulk density of 25.5 pounds per cubic foot giving us a required hopper capacity of 15.7 cubic foot. We now know that for this specific bulk density of material, which is a combination of virgin and regrind materials, that we need a hopper with approximately 15.7 cubic feet of capacity to dry material for 4 hours at 100 pounds per hour. Armed with this cubic foot hopper capacity number, we can now go to our Conair drying hopper spec sheet and pick out the correct model of hopper from our extensive range of possibilities. In this case we find two choices, one above and one below our 15.7 cubic foot number. At this point, for our final selection, we may want to understand from the application if we should go to the upper range, 18 cubic foot, or would a slightly smaller hopper, 15.0 cubic feet, be okay. Factors to consider are, do the known parameters of this application reflect a realistic range of throughput and or drying time, or are they a bit exaggerated? Do we need to be competitive or safe? Will it be rare that this application will fulfill this expectation? How's the weather where the drying will take place? Humid? Dry? Non-air conditioned factory? Will the drying system be used on other jobs? Will they be larger or smaller throughputs? Shorter or longer drying times? Heavier or lighter materials? It is always safer to go to the next larger drying hopper size to assure that we have met the expectations of the drying system we are specifying. But we should always be prudent in our selection to be sure we are not oversizing or using exaggerated data to determine the hopper size. Now let's summarize what we have done and go over the math one more time. We'll give it to you first in English and then metric units. Step 1. Determine the ratios of virgin to regrind materials to be used in the drying process, which are typically percentages that will add up to 100. Note that if there is only one material and no regrind being dried, this step is not necessary. Multiply each percentage, expressed as a decimal, by its bulk density. It is always best to know or to measure the bulk density of the materials, but if the bulk density of the regrind is not known, the rule of thumb is to assume that it is one half of the virgin bulk density. Add the two results together to get the average bulk density for these two materials in pounds per cubic foot. Step 2 will multiply the drying time in hours by the anticipated throughput in pounds. Divide that number by the bulk density we calculated in step 1. The result will be the hopper's required capacity in cubic feet. Last step, look up the cubic foot capacity of the hopper on the drying hopper spec sheet to select the proper model of hopper. Typically, it is best to go to the next larger model. And now, let's go over our calculations using metric units. Step 1. Determine the ratios of virgin to regrind materials to be used in the drying process in percentages. Multiply each percentage in decimal form by its bulk density as expressed in grams per cubic centimeter or kilograms per liter. Note that the results will be the same using either of these measurement units. If the bulk density of the regrind is not known, a quick reference we can use is that the regrind weighs one half of the virgin bulk density. Add the two calculated results together to get the average bulk density for these two materials, expressed in grams per cubic centimeter or kgs per liter. Step 2 takes our average bulk density into an equation with drying time and anticipated throughput. First we multiply drying time in hours by the required throughput in kgs per hour. Then we divide that number by the bulk density we calculated in step 1. 
The result will be the required hopper's capacity in liters. Last step, look up the hopper capacity in liters on the drying hopper spec sheet to select the proper model of hopper. Typically, it is best to go to the next larger hopper model. We hope you now understand the significance of material variations and bulk density in the selection of drying hoppers for resin dehumidification systems. Thank you for your time and attention.